What is our responsibility to one another as followers of Jesus? And how does the awareness of failure in others affect the way we might see ourselves? Paul's counsel to the Galatian churches on this difficult issue gives us some helpful handles to work with. Here's Dr. Jim Bradford with more on today's Central Moment. I welcome you to Central Moments today. So good to be with you again. Uh, we have just finished five weeks of working verse by verse through Paul's letter to the Galatians in the New Testament of the Bible. And week number six, we're starting with chapter uh, six and verse one, and this will be our last week out of this book. But Paul uh, ends this letter in an incredible way. Brothers and sisters, verse one of chapter six, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Now, he's been saying in the previous verses that there's two very different lifestyles. There's the before Christ life that we live outside the influence of the Spirit, that we live by the flesh, and uh, it, it does not do good things to our relationships with one another or to our personal health or to our well-being. The other way is you live by the Spirit who's come because Jesus put to death the power of sin or the flesh. And and he gives us the fruit of the Spirit, that ability, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness. And, and, and so he's saying here are these two different ways of living. And, and it all ultimately comes down to the way we love or do not love one another. And he's picking up on that now in verse 1 of chapter 6 because, because we have in our community, we have in our circle of friendships people who fail, who just get deceived by sin. Sometimes people need to be confronted about destructive behavior. It's affecting them. It's affecting those around them. And and this is where he's going to help us with some really practical handles. He said, brothers and sisters, someone is caught in a sin. You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Am I my brother's keeper? Well, he's kind of saying yes. Yes, it reminds us of Hebrews 3, where he says, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it's called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Sin is so deceitful. Spiritual drift, like what's happening in Galatians, is so subtle and yet so consequential that we need to encourage each other today uh, so that we're not deceived by sin. And this is what he's saying. There is a place where we restore people. We confront sin. We... If we see patterns in people's lives, we, we love them enough to talk to them. But here, here's, here's his two qualifiers. First of all, you do it gently and not abusively. You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. He's already used that phrase, you who live by the Spirit, in the previous chapter. He said, if we live by the Spirit, after having listed the fruit of the Spirit, if we live by the Spirit, we need to keep in step with the Spirit. And one of the ways you keep in step with the Spirit is... And he chooses gentleness, one of the fruit of the Spirit. He said, we treat each other gently. And when you have to confront somebody, you don't just, you're just not angry. You're pointing the finger. You're not being judgmental and accusing. You're just being honest. Sometimes it's easier to start with questions rather than accusations. Like, talk to me, what's going on in your life? How do you feel about it? But, but, but there, there, there comes places in which we can use gentleness to confront. And the other way is he's saying that we do this not only gently, but we do it humbly. We're, we're not arrogant about this. Because he goes on to say, and as you point out sin in other people's lives, watch yourselves. But watch yourselves so that you too will not be tempted. And we, we, this is a great governor on the way we confront other people. Like, like, like we do it knowing that by the grace of God, I could be in that person's shoes. I mean, I could be the person that would mess up. I think whenever you get this spiritual arrogance and overconfidence, like, like you know, I'm better than everybody else. I'm spiritually imper- impervious to ever being deceived by sin. I, I mean, when you get in that place, I think of the Proverbs. Let he, the person who thinks they stand be careful because they're the ones that are going to fall. And, and so we do it gently in our confrontation, and we also do it humbly, watching ourselves, knowing that we may also be tempted. And in that way, he said, we carry one another's burdens. Father, we thank you for the people in our lives who confront us. 
when they see dangerous things, when they see spiritual drift in us, when they see sin patterns growing in our lives. And we pray you'll help us to do that. Maybe some of us need to do some intervention with, with drug addicts in our families. Maybe some of us just see our kids drifting or our, or our spouse drifting spiritually. Help us to be willing to gently and with the fear of God, humbly to bear each other's burdens and help each other in our weaknesses and failures. We pray you'll help us to do this so that we all stand strong. In Jesus' name.